Jesus is a mini God, but there's a convention in the Hebrew scriptures uh -huh. that sounds very unconventional to our ears today. Uh -huh. Where God Almighty bestowed the title Elohim upon certain chosen men. Yeah. Because of the role and function they fulfilled. Uh -huh. This began with Moses, a unique man unmatched in the history of the world, less Yeshua Jesus, of course. Um, who God chose to reveal his, his will, you know, rescue the Israelites. And by virtue of the fact that Stephen says in Acts 7, God appointed him ruler and judge and redeemer of Israel, he was given the title Elohim in Exodus 4 7 and uh, 7 1. Who, who is appointed? Who has been appointed? So God Almighty gave that title to Moses. Now, if you look at Psalm 45, we have a a psalm written to one of the Davidic kings, so mm -hmm. descendant of, of David. And he is also addressed as Elohim. Now no one considered Moses or the Davidic king to literally be God Almighty. But a convention, again, very strange to our ears today, but kings were called and referred to as God. Both in the Jewish psyche, even though it sounds strange to our ears today, but also in the Greek culture. And you see that, I think it's in uh, is it Acts 11, where King Herod makes a proclamation that people hear him. And, um, and basically he claimed that he was speaking with the voice of a God. Uh, sorry, the people claimed that he was speaking with the voice of a God. And because he did not give all glory to the one true God, when people addressed him with his title, he was struck down dead by an angel. And then lastly, we see the judges of Israel are also given the title Elohim number of times in the scriptures but also people in position of authority by virtue of the fact that they were the ones given responsibility for adjudicating the law of God and and in that position you also have the control over life and death now the thing that makes Yeshua Jesus so unique is that he is the promised prophet like Moses Jesus said he was in John 5 47 Philip said he was in John 1 49 Peter said he was in Acts chapter 3, Stephen in Acts chapter 7, I think it's verse 48, and then Paul um, talks about this twice, once in Acts 26 and once in Acts 28. The so what of that is, just as Moses was called Elohim. But I, I hear what you're saying, but I think it's a different context. I mean, my question to you is, when was Jesus created then, if you believe he's a creation? Okay, so... And when did Jesus come into existence? I believe Jesus came into existence literally in the womb of his mother Mary. Okay, but then there is a contradiction because I, you know, I'm not a linguistic historian, but clearly these titles that were given to people, um, you know, they're not the same as, you know, Jesus, the Son of God, the Redeemer, the, you know, Redeemer from our sins. And, you know, I'm sure that they've discussed this with you how. He appeared many times in the Old Testament. So, so, my, so I would um, I would robustly challenge um, those who would say Yeshua appeared in the Old Testament. For I think the foundation of that is in after the resurrection of Jesus in Luke chapter 24, and um, we have two occasions where Jesus um, basically well, we, we know Jesus spent 40 days teaching his disciples, which specific passages in the Hebrew Scriptures, beginning with the Law of Moses, beginning with Moses, the Prophets and the Psalms were specifically about him. Now I have faith that the New Testament, through the inspiration of the Spirit of God, has retained and recorded those passages for us. What's really key is every single passage that my Trinitarian brothers and sisters argue is speaking of Jesus in the Hebrew We're scriptures. not brothers and sisters, Okay, okay that's sorry. fine. Okay. But so, we so love I, you. I want to add something. So, so okay. to go on to your earlier point, so he's making uh, a point about the fact that Moses is uh, considered Elohim of Israel, which is, is considered Elohim, but not of Israel, not as the pattern, but the you know, again, good, great, heaven, earth, God, Elohim. There's a connection there, but a connection essentially isn't the same connection made with the other passages where Elohim is mentioned. For example, Isaiah, if you read Isaiah 48 verse 2, it says that God shares his glory with no one. Yeah. Right? And then if you read passages in John 10, for example, God shares his glory with Jesus, God shares his glory with everybody according to John 17. So this is obviously a contradiction, but those two words, even though they mean they're the same words, have different meanings, different connotations. If you read for the scriptures, like you mentioned of course the passages where Jesus is referred to be speaking about himself, being prior to his existence in incarnation. You claimed clearly that it was during his incarnation he in fact was Jesus before that there was no Jesus for salvation. But the Bible says that only God 
is the salvation of Israel. You see, Jesus being the salvation of Israel. And Jesus himself, we read uh, John, John 8, 14, all the way to 58, he clearly says that he was before him. Now, you can't skirt around him and claim, well, no, he's claimed to be the Messiah before Abraham because the context isn't there. And then you read John 5, 8, 8, 5, 8, where Jesus says, I am, implying ego in me, he used the same word, by the way, used in Exodus 3, 14. He's applied it to himself, and the Jews, they didn't respond to what Matthew was talking about. They responded by trying to stone him because they considered him, they, they considered him being, doing the work of a blasphemy. So they considered that, they considered that he was speaking about being prior to Abraham. Abraham is a father of the Israelites, so that's the distinction Jesus Christ is making. If I could, um, um, John has raised a lot of, um, you know, uh, I know points that are very dear to Trinitarians. Uh, I'll maybe just address the last one about uh, John 8:58. So, in many people have been taught to believe that that's Jesus referring to Exodus 3:14. Now, what's really important is in the Greek um, in Exodus 3:14, Jehovah says uh, "ego emi ho hon," and so in the English, um, both "ego emi" and "ho hon" are both translated as "I am" and "I am." The problem is, is that when God Almighty refers to himself as, as I am, it's actually ho hon. I am is just the Greek um, grammar by which you claim to be anything. I am a builder, I am the anointed one, I am a fireman. And so for God Almighty to declare that he is the ho hon, the self-existent one, he has to declare in the Greek, ego me, but he then says ho hon. And in John 8, 58, Jesus never says that, it's just ego me. The next point about that passage is actually, if you read it really carefully, Jesus never said that he saw Abraham. He actually says that Abraham saw his day. So Jesus never claimed um, that he saw Abraham as, as the Pharisee. No, but Abraham did meet Jesus. Yes, but it's very different. So what Trinitarian says that, that so if I can, if I can, I'll explain. So I actually want to jump in right now because again, to, to just, so we do this point by point so we don't get strayed off into other contexts. We'll do this point by point. So I make a point and you make a point and I'll, and I'll respond to it. So in terms of the whole one, because this argument is used by many non-Trinitarian people, including the Muslims, they will say that, no, in Exodus 3.14, the word whole one is used, but it's not used. For example, when I read this, so this is, read it here, right? There's no whole one, there's just whole. And if you read the, the, the Greek, actually manuscripts of Septuagint, it doesn't even use the word on at all. In none of them use the word on, because the word is ne. There is no classification of the God, it's just specifically classified, classified of I am that I am. If you read this, right? This is Kai Ipon, so this is the same verse, Exodus 3.14. Kai Ipon Ho Theos Pros Moses, so that's Moses, Ego and Me, Ho, Ho, doesn't there's no on mentions again. I me, Kai, Ipon, Raitos, Ipon, Ho. Again, Ego and Me, Ego and Me, used twice. And remember what I said about context. So let me finish. Right, so remember what I said about context. Context is key. Because obviously, if we're gonna imply that Jesus himself has called himself the Messiah in John 8:58. Then what then do you do in John 9 verse 9 with the blind man who says, I am? He says the same, very same words the that Jesus that. says. I love it. He says the very same words that Jesus says, but it has different connotations. Notice in John 18 verse 5, for example. If you read John 18 verse 5, for example, which I can get up for you if you want to read it, you can get up on your Bible if you want to. John 18 verse 5 is where Jesus says, I am he. Notice what happens when he says, I am he. But the he, guards, there is no he in the text. Right, but he says, I am, doesn't he? Yeah, so it's same same concept for it doesn't it, it doesn't vary with me at all. Barely anyway. It says I am or I am he, regardless of whether it says I am he or I am. The guards fall back on their heads. Now they wouldn't do that. They didn't they didn't have that reaction before when Jesus said I am. When Jesus said oh, no, do not believe that I am he or die your sins, they didn't have reaction in John 8 before. Why did they have that reaction there? Because the context matters. He was came to be the God of Israel, and through shock and awe, they fell to the ground. Oh, you came from the, the majestic, the, the pure, raw majesty of the, the term, I am the existing one, that Jesus Christ is inferring. Okay. You can use that same line which refers to Jesus Christ. Exodus 3.14, there is no Hawan, you've made that up. Now, I want you to go to the actual okay, so, 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 Johnny, you, you've given your argument. I'm gonna address two points. So first of all, I'm going to address the Ho-Horn piece here. So I can show, this is actually from the Septuagint itself, and you can clearly see Ho-Horn there, which is the 1B. And what is even more startling in regards to the evidence, that if you go to the Septuagint, sorry, uh, Codex Sciaticus, um, sorry, and you look at Exodus, uh, sorry, Revelation 1.4 and Revelation 1.8, where it refers to the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. You have the exact same Greek as you have in Exodus 3.14, which you do not have 
in John 8:58, and that's absolutely critical. Now the point is, John and I can he can accuse me of making a verse up. If you if you focus in on, on these images here, you will see the Greek from Codex Sinaiticus itself. What website now, is this? Uh, uh, this I can't recall. Is it a Unitarian website? No, no it's, it's, it's a Look, Trinitarian. That's so John, this John, is, my turn. No, sorry, John, I've not finished. No, I'm just going to make an please. insertion. Please, no, no, John, uh, please. You, you, made, right, so, you, you made a compelling uh, argument. Come, come, come. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this insertion, right? Because he claimed that no, no, it's stated. No, 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 John, you've made your point. Right, right, I've counted it. Calm down. Right, so he made the assertion that this claims in the LXX. So this is the Septuagint, by the way, the 70, right? It's different He made the claim that Hoon is in this verse. Hoon is nowhere in this verse. Again, you can read for yourself. I have no reason to This is the Blue letter Bible. What so the source I have is the Blue Letter Bible. No, now this is authorized. This is the authorized Bible there is a website. by even Unitarians. Oh, sorry, so guys. even Unitarians no, accept no, this Bible. No, they don't. Okay. Yes, they do. They but accept so you Bible. don't have what's your source? So, can, so, your hey, Amy, can I, can I just oh. show this on screen? Just to show the lies of these heretics and, and also the Muhammadan comes this part continuously and tell us that Exodus 3.14 says the God. It doesn't say the God. It says ho it, it says ho. It says God. There's no ho on. So what, what's your There's source no of okay, this okay, okay, my turn. Uh, uh, I don't do want to. Okay. Can you continue Everyone, right, okay, so I just want to show, show, show it. I just want to show this. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to repeat. I, I don't know where your heart is right now. Just, can like, I? Please. No, do you know what? We'll wrap this up. I have right, one question can for can you. Can I show this on screen? Yeah, we'll show this. So that's fine. Right. So this is it, right? If I may. So that says Hophios, right? Pros. Moses, so Moses is the word. Nazarene! Ego, emi, ho, i, me, kai, i, pon, great. You don't see the whole one. Where is the whole one? So what, what's your source? Trump? What so, is your source? Because if anybody okay. can write there, any there website is, and right. see anything. So listen, this is not about any website. People and John are all be aware. what's your source? Because you said it's a blue... What's it's your source? It's a blue letter again? Bible. You can, go to Bible. You, you can go to this Bible Hub. This is a blue letter Bible. So yeah, what's you your source? Go, go to BibleHub.com. Yeah? Uh -huh. But I'm, I don't wish to argue with John anymore on this specific point, okay? He's made a point, I've made a counterpoint. We can argue the I ground. I want to ask him a question. Point. I want to ask him a question. But hold on, hold on, excuse yeah, me, if on. I just may. I just want yeah. to talk about, the, if you read John 8.58, there's some yeah. really telling points in that passage why it proves beyond all doubt that Jesus was not claiming to be Jehovah. First of all, God has never called I am anywhere in scripture. His name is Jehovah, it's used 7,000 times. No one ever addresses him as Ho-Hon or Ego and me. That's the first point. Secondly, in this passage, Jesus declares he is a, a, a man, a human being. Now, if Yeshua is speaking to the people and he claims he is a man, they just think he's a normal man. Second, he's a man who heard the truth from God. And in this conversation, he actually says to the religious Pharisees that your father is Satan. You are children of the devil. I'll say that to you. you okay, but okay, you can no. say that for me, but at least yeah. I'm preaching what Jesus said. The yeah. reason really why they got... I want to notice John, something. No, my so turn. So my with turn. these heretics, oh, they don't God. read the Bible. Remember, he read John 8, right? So oh, the very God. same John 8, I'm going to read to him to so show me. him if he denies Jesus excuse being God. Me. Because excuse the context matters. No, the we don't just make up stuff because we're heretics. We actually read the Bible. Here's the thing, you claim to have the God that I do, but you don't even read his word. I'm going to read this though. I have a turn. I haven't finished, I got... I'm gonna read this out. So okay, notice he said he quoted Jesus where it said that your father is the devil. That's what you quoted, right? Yes. So have you read on? Why why is their father the devil? Because they did not do the deeds of Abraham. No, well no, no, not just That's that. Not what right. did they what was the deed of Abraham? What was the exact deed of Abraham? Because they did And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Now, what does the Bible tell us exactly. all throughout Scripture? John 3, 16. Because if they Abraham, believe in him, okay. they shall be saved from their sins. But hold on, wait, okay. The whole of the context implies that you must believe in Jesus. But we, got, we don't have to go oh, that far. No, no, I'm going to no, read no, this, let, right? Let's not go elsewhere. Jesus answered, let's I am not, not a devil. But he's responding to people like you. You know your father's oh, no, no. a devil, right? Okay, so he's responding okay. to them. And he's saying, Jesus answered to them and said, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, yes. and you dishonor me. So thereby, by dishonoring him, you're, okay. you're dishonoring his father as yeah. well. You, know, you realize okay, that. But that's what let's read on, right? The context matters. John, John 8, 52. Then, the, then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil, Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man say, keep my saying, so his words, he shall not taste death. Now notice, Jesus saying his words equate life. It's the same as the God of the Old Testament, the God of the Old Testament tells us. His words is life. That's a fact. Yeah, okay. So, so that's what that's okay. what Psalm 119 I don't, I don't claims. I'm gonna like continue. To make, I'm gonna continue no, no, because John, you don't you, like you said a lot. Hold Jesus on, John answered, I'm reading the Bible right now. Do you not do not respect to the words of I your Lord? Do, John, I so then you, be quiet. Jesus answered and said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me. Yep. Remember? So God honors him. Yes. By the way, God in the Old Testament says he gives his glory to nobody. Okay, so if he's talking about a singular man or a 
underrated man. Why is God the Father honouring and giving glory to an underrated man? Let's continue, right? Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if and if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Now you mentioned that, oh, well, he's not talking about Jesus being God. He just rejoiced to see his day. But hold on, if Abraham's saying that he saw his day, and that day has come, because by the time, obviously Jesus is speaking to Jews, that day has come, yeah. it's evident that Jesus is talking about being there in the Old Testament. No. And because so the Bible makes no sense, John 5, Jesus okay. says that he was there okay. with Abraham, Abraham spoke of him, okay. and Moses spoke Jono, of him as well. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read this one. So no, no, I'm no, going to no, read no, on. You've had a good couple of minutes, John. Then said the Jews unto okay, listen, thou I'm art not this yet 50 years old, mate, yeah. and has thou seen Abraham? Remember what he said, you're not 50 years old, how have you seen Abraham, sir? Okay, so my turn. What does it say here? What does it say here? Come on, listen, if you're going to control this. No, he's not coping now. Right? You don't like the words, you don't have the words of the Lord because you're of your let father. Me and the respond right? I'm going to read the rest you of the verse. You are the type, you are, look, you're so timid, you're word. speaking over. Okay, I'll let you I'm finish. I'm going to read the rest of the verse. Okay. Go, calm down, dude. Seriously. Me. Jesus said unto him, me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Ego in me. This implies the context. And you remember, you mentioned before, right? That ego in me is not, no prophet says, calls God ego in me. That's right, that doesn't matter because God says himself, I am that I am. Ego in me, ho, ego in me. Okay, doesn't lying, use the term ho, ho, ho on. Doesn't say, and we go okay. on camera. Here's the thing. We've got it on camera where you are lying. You are lying. You are lying because okay. you haven't even produced one verse to disprove this. I don't need to prove this. Yeah, let's the ego in me is me. used clearly. You've I not disproved my point. Excuse, excuse me, are you okay? So at this point, we're finished, we're done. Oh, you're weak. You're weak. You are weak. I don't have to 